are not based on assets or credit worthiness. So uh, people will often will ask that question, well, my credit isn't that good, are you going to be doing that? No. There's no application fee. There's a one-time fee, and that's to record the loan at the Registry of Deeds. And that is approximately $176. So that's the only out-of-pocket expense, but in fact, that can get added to the loan. Um, 90-something percent of all the people that apply for this program are under the 100% of median income, and that's for Metropolitan Boston. If you, if you qualify for that, you will get a 0% interest loan with deferred payment until the house is sold or the title is transferred. There's also the 3% loans, and those are for people that are over income and that then if there's a term to the loan and you can either pay interest only for the life of the loan or amortize it and will be paid off at the time the loan is, um, the terms of, are through. So you can see that um, the income guidelines are, are pretty generous. So if you make, if it's a family of one and you make $66,100 or less, you're eligible for a 0% interest loan. I'll let you t look at that just a little bit and, and see, so that you can tell, tell, you know, understand now that uh, the vast majority of all the applicants I have uh, fit in the zero percent interest loan. Can you guidelines. do that number again? If you, if you, yes. Well, so if you're a family of two, so if you're Frank right. and Mary, if you're Frank, Frank and Mary, and Mary. Yeah. Frank and Mary, their income at seventy-five thousand six, they they'd be entitled to a zero percent loan. Um, and the, and the loan would sit, and there'd be no mortgage payments due until the house were sold. Yes. Or until they died, if they, if they died. Does that um, trigger it? Or okay, let's say, let's say um, Frank passes away. Frank's the one with a disability, and he passes yeah. away before Mary. The house doesn't have to be sold. The house remains, Mary stays in the house until such time that it either goes through probate because they're leaving it to one of their children, or until such time Mary decides to move out and the house is sold. That's when the closing attorney is going to see that there is a lien on the property, and that's how we secure this loan. It becomes a, a, like a second mortgage. If you already have a first, this would come in behind that. Um, if your uh, house is paid off, this would be a lien on the property. It would show up um, as such. It's going to show up as a mortgage on, on the registry of deeds, and it would get paid off at that time. Marianne, excuse me, just one more. I'm sorry. Yeah, can I be turning my back to the no. camera? <laughs> I should be standing up, but I was just being lazy. <laughs> She's so tech savvy, too. Maybe I won't invite you back. So, <laughs> so, um, so um, now I forgot my question. Oh, I know. So, so that the, this is based on the Boston Metropolitan Statistical. Uh, right. uh, is, is that going to count down here? Yes. That's my, that was my question. Okay. Yes. Yeah, if they use the Metropolitan Boston figures. For statewide, statewide, statewide income guidelines. Okay. So just I'm going to run through a couple of examples of the modifications. And then I'm going to tell you at the end about the application process. So in this situation, we can level the surface of a yard. Sometimes somebody has difficulty, um, you know, some mobility issues. And they don't maybe don't need a ramp, but their yard is uneven. So we've been able to go in and grade yards, um, and this house has has a ramp. Uh, kitchen modifications are folks that can't reach the cabinets up above. They need to have things lowered and have to have that modified. You can see in one of those slides uh, where the oven is lowered. Sometimes it's as simple as removing carpeting and putting down either wood or laminate floors. If the carpet is 
needs to be stretched and it's buckling, it becomes a safety issue for some people uh, you know, trying to go through the house. Widen the doorways. An older home, very often, even with, with a walker, some of these doorways aren't wide enough to be able to, to ambulate and be safe. Uh, bathroom modifications are probably the number one item. People are having difficulty getting in and out of their bathtub. So they start off using grab bars, but then find out that you know they, they really need something more secure. So you can see with a, with a toilet, and then this bathroom is, is a wheel-in. Um, you have walk-in and also have the wheel-in for the for people that use a, a wheelchair. Stair lift, we do a lot of these as well. Uh, amazing, uh, these stair lifts can go around corners, multi-level. They have exterior stair lifts as well as interior. Um, this program is for, uh, primarily is for homeowners, but if somebody rents and the landlord is willing to take out a loan, the landlord can have the same opportunity for this program, providing the person that resides in the home meets the eligibility uh, criteria. Then the landlord can do this, but he or she then would be an automatic 3% interest loan or interest borrower. Uh, the homeowner hires the contractors. We don't have a crew that goes out to do this. Think of, of uh, SMOC as a nonprofit bank. I work with the borrower, I work with the contractor, I help the borrower manage the money and disperse the money. But the, the relationship between the borrower and the contractor getting the work done, that's their relationship. Um, I, can give a, I can give a list of names, but we don't have a preferred list. We don't get involved in at that. All the contractors must be licensed and insured. Um, they, there's a standard bid form that they need to use. The bids are reviewed by a committee. Um, they need to be sent out a monitor to take a look at the projects to make sure that what's being requested is actually what, what's needed and what the contractor is saying they're going to do match up. And then in uh, releasing the funds to the contractor, um, there are invoices, and I review all the invoices before the money is paid. Just a couple more. This is a, a chairlift. Chairlift has to be installed by a licensed elevator company, uh, but that person can uh, put the wheelchair right onto the lift and then have it uh, go up to the uh, first level. Uh, I mentioned. Uh, Youngsters with disabilities could do a number of fencing for uh, children with autism. One of the characteristics of our kids that, that tend to flee, wander or flee. So we've in, enclosed a number of yards for that. I'm going to go back here and then just briefly talk to you about the application process and how long this takes. Um, it is it's not a difficult application to do, and, and I am available to help people, uh, but it can seem a little daunting. It's taking out a bank loan, right? So there is, there is uh, the application forms that have to be filled out. You need a copy of your deed to show that you own the property. You need evidence that your property taxes are, are paid and are current. You need documentation of medical needs. So somebody that you have a relationship with uh, could be a physical therapist or could be a physician, could be an occupational therapist, um, anybody in that, that field, that will attest to the fact that you have limitations on you uh, based on, it could be age, um, disability, or um, a medical issue. And, you know, so a lot of people with COPD, a lot of people with various other things that you don't automatically think of them as being disabled. Um, that person, the medical evidence has to be submitted as part of the application. And, and then the contractors um, bid as well. That comes, all of that comes to me and then I review it. I take a look for what I, I know won't pass when it, when it goes to the next round. So I work very closely with the people that are trying to borrow the money. Um, and I've never not had anybody not go through this successfully. So it's, um, uh, but that takes about, depends on how quick people do these things. It can be from uh, two to three weeks to 
two to three months by the time people pull all of their stuff together. I can go to somebody's home and help them, but I mean, I can't go through their personal items. They need to go through that themselves. Um, then the, the monitor gets assigned, goes out to the, uh, to the home, takes a look at the project, and then uh, we start the, the loan process at that point. There are loan documents that I generate, send out to the, to the homeowner. I can go actually and, and review the documents with, uh, with a person or they can meet with a friend or, or talk with an attorney about it. These are, they're all legal documents. Uh, they get signed, returned to me, and then about three weeks later, the loan gets funded. The state releases funds every other Wednesday, so it's not a long wait, but you do have to get into the pipeline for, for the funding. And then once the loan is funded, then I work with the borrower regularly, talking about how is the project coming, um, and, you know, if they have any problems with the contractor, they call me, I try to work that through those issues through with the contractor. We release funds based on the invoice and we hold back 10% until the loan, until the project is complete. And we go back out and take a look at the job. The monitor goes back out as well and did, did what the contractor said they were gonna do, is that actually what was done? I go out at the same time and then if in fact it's satisfactory, I hand out the final 10% that we hold. And then we can go to peace of mind.